Hi, I'm Jared, an intern at One Energy. Welcome to today's Science Short. Have you ever looked in a mirror to see if there was something on your face, like maybe after a messy summer barbecue, and you can see exactly where that barbecue sauce is on your face, so you can wipe it off? Or have you ever tried to reach for something underwater, and you can't really seem to get it at first because it seems like it's in a different place than how it looks? Both of these phenomena occur because of how light interacts with different objects. The study of the behavior of light is called optics. Today, we're going to discuss two properties of optics, reflection and refraction. Let's start with reflection. You're likely already familiar with the term reflection. It's what you see every single time you look into a mirror. But what is it exactly? Reflection is when light hits a surface and then bounces back. Here's how it works. Light will originate from a source, like the sun, or a fluorescent light, or a flashlight, and it starts traveling. As it travels, it may encounter some sort of surface. When it hits that surface, it'll hit at an angle, and that first angle is called the angle of incidence. If it is reflected, it will then bounce back at an equal angle called the angle of reflection. However, if the surface is wavy, like a funhouse mirror, the reflections will appear distorted, even though the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are always the same. This is why the mirror you might use to get ready in the morning is flat. It allows for the light to reflect back undistorted, and you get a nice view of yourself. Remember how we said objects can appear shifted or even in a slightly different position than where they are underwater? This is a great example of another property of optics, refraction. Refraction is a change in the direction of light as it passes from one material to another, like from air to water. Light travels at different speeds in different materials, so when it transitions from one material to another, this change in speed also causes the light to have a slight directional change as well. The speed of light as it travels through different materials changes because of the different densities of materials. When there are more molecules for light rays to navigate around, as in a higher density material like concrete or water, it will take longer for light to travel through them. Whereas, on the other hand, a lower density material, like air, will allow light to travel faster through it. Just like with reflection, there are two angles we're going to be focusing on with refraction. The angle of incidence is the angle at which the incoming light will reach a surface, just like with reflection, but the angle at which the light bends at the material transition is, in this scenario, called the angle of refraction. If we know the type of materials the light beam is passing from and into, and we know the angle of incidence, we can actually calculate what the angle of refraction is, which will reveal how much the light will bend. Here's the equation, where n is the refractive index and is dependent on the material that the light is passing through, and theta1 and theta2 are the incident angle and refractive angle, respectively. These n values are related to the object's density. Here's a list showing the refractive index values for a lot of common materials. In general, this equation explains that if there's a large difference between the densities of the materials, then the directional change will be larger. But if the two materials are fairly compatible in density, then the angle of refraction will be very similar to the angle of incidence. To demonstrate refraction, here's a glass of water and a stick. The air above the water is our first material light will be traveling through, and the water is the second. When you dip the stick in the water, you can see that it looks disconnected at the boundary between the air and the water. This is because of how the light is being refracted once it hits that boundary. Air and water have different densities, so there's a change in the light's speed and direction. If you pull the stick out, it no longer looks disconnected. Using both reflection and refraction together, along with other properties of optics, we can change how we view the world around us. We use telescopes with curved mirrors to refract light to look at faraway objects, and magnifying lenses to do the same to things up close. Rear view and side view mirrors on cars allow us to drive safe, and even One Energy's LiDAR unit, this machine right here, uses reflection to allow us to measure wind speeds up to 150 meters in the air. Well, that's it for today's Science Short. We hope we were able to shed some light on reflection or refraction today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and remember to challenge everything. Thank you.